Are you a resident here at Edinburgh Manor? We really don't know what their definition of insanity was. I do know that there were people here that were here for no other reason than their families didn't want them. Whoa, whoa. I have seen people scratched. Oh, sh Mommy. Mommy. Susie? The energy is different. You can feel it. Whoa. That light just come on? Uh, that's really creepy. All right, Dave, we are officially pulling up to Edinburgh Manor. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. I am excited for this one. This is said to be the most haunted asylum in all of Iowa. Yes, it is. Look at this place. You can just feel the energy off of this place as you pull up. Wow. Is Edinburgh Manor haunted? Yes, I do believe that it is. You hear the noises, the tapping, the knocking, the shuffling, and I have been pushed. I have had my hair pulled, seen people scratched. The energy is different. You can feel it. Oh, wow. This is really cool. Yeah, this is a little bit creepier than I was expecting. Yeah. You wanna head down this way? Yeah, let's walk down this way. We have yet to see any part of this building. And I'm really excited to walk through here and get kind of like a first impression as to what the energy of Edinburgh Manor is like, because it's infamous. We've heard so many stories about this place and we're finally here. Historically, somewhere around 1846 to 1850, this entire property, there was over 200 acres, was the county poor farm, where if you were homeless or got arrested, they would send you here and you had to work. It was a place for people to go who didn't have any place else to be. Over time, it transitioned to this particular building, which has been here since 1911. And they always intended to house insane people here. It's so creepy to see the beds and the chairs and everything in these rooms. As they would have been. As they would have been. Especially when you get to see like the toys for the children, it kind of tugs at your heartstrings and makes you understand that, you know, there were children that called this place home, children that passed away here. And there's a lot of energies that are picked up on a lot of people that experience child spirits in here. Uh, there's a little girl. She's probably one of my favorites. Um, I learned about her early on into this whole process. She's somewhere between the ages of seven and 10, and her name is Suzanne, but they call her Susie. She was dropped off and left here. Very sad situation. When people encountered her, they didn't, she didn't understand. She didn't know what was going on, you know, very angry. And then the people that come realize that she likes to play. Yeah, I mean, looking at this, you might think like you're, you're crammed into this building with a bunch of other people and you know that it might not have been very clean the food might not have been that great the staff might not have been that great the care might not have been that great but this is it's how you're shuffling this is this is the only thing these people had mm -hmm. this was this was it this was their last stop their last resort the care might not have been that great, but this is... This is... They called him insane. We don't use those words any longer, but they, they called him insane. We really don't know what their definition of insanity was. I do know that there were people here that were here for no other reason than their families didn't want them. 
They may not have been crazy. They may have been a little weird. But back then you could do that. You didn't have to have a reason to put someone in a facility like this. So people fell through the cracks. Bad things did happen. It was operational as a care facility, I guess you'd call it, um, for adults with mental disabilities up until November of 2010. And at that time, there were 30 adult residents. Um, they really didn't know they were leaving. It was kind of a, a sad situation. The county leased it out, and the company that was here asked the county for money to put into the building. The county said no. They left. Oh, I bet you this is how you get to the... I, wait. I heard something upstairs. That's the basement, but I just heard something up here. Hello? Did you hear that? I did not, no. If there's anyone up here with us, my name is Ryan and this is Dave and we're gonna be spending the night with you tonight. That was what I heard. That was like movement right here on the stairs, yes. You're more than welcome to come out and talk to us. That's why we came here tonight. Oh, sh wait, wait, wait. Hello? That was loud. That was very loud. Oh, sh What direction did it come from? It sounded down this way. Yeah. And they, like these are the original beds and the original furniture. So, you know, this was harboring a lot of energy from these residents that were here that may have passed on. Yeah. I believe it's 253 documented deaths. <sighs> Historically, we know that if someone died, it is highly likely that they would give you some sort of burial, but we don't really have a clue where all those people are. Okay, this is definitely tight quarters here. And this is the uh Dining hall, wow. Oh, that, <laughs> it just keeps going. That is quite intimidating. Yeah. Uh, in the basement, there's a long hallway that goes between the dining room and the laundry room. Middle of the day, I was walking from the laundry room towards the dining room and whatever it was came at me and did what I describe as like a shoulder jack. And literally it just kind of went like that and I spun around. It was a little disconcerting and I'm like, um, let's not do that again. That was probably the biggest, biggest one I, I've had. And that, I believe that right there is the hallway that Cindy said that we should pay attention to tonight. The biggest, I don't know if it's a caution or a, a reminder is that the majority of people that lived here had some sort of mental illness. So their communication skills may not always be what we want it to be or expect it to be. To me, being pushed or having my hair pulled is not evil, bad. It's just a way to get your attention. You just expect to look over and see someone walk by one of these doorways. Oh yeah. And I don't know if that's an expectation or a premonition of the energy, but. It's creepy. But this hallway right out here, this is definitely an abandonment spot. Oh, absolutely. Camera, this end down here, pointing all the way down to the cafeteria. Yeah. Occasionally, it can get uncomfortable. I have heard some 
musings from some people that um, there may be something dark here. So I just, you know, throwing out a word of caution, there are people that believe that there, there may be something negative that has been brought here. Well, if there's anyone down here, like I said upstairs, my name is Ryan and this is Dave. We are going to be staying the night here and you're more than welcome to come and talk to us. We think that your home is beautiful and we'd love it if you would speak to us or even show yourself to us. Let us see you. We've heard so many stories about the infamous Edinburgh Manor and we're here to, we're here to see if you can still come out and speak to people even after you've passed on. We hope you'll speak to us. All right, everybody, we are getting ready to take off for abandonment. Dave and I just set up all the cameras. We have a lot of equipment here throughout Edinburgh Manor. We have this camera here around and amongst the residence rooms on the second floor. We have a camera down in the main hallway on the first floor, and then a camera down in the hallway that leads to the cafeteria down in the basement. All areas that Cindy told us are areas where people pick up a lot of paranormal activity here at Edinburgh Manor. So we are gonna leave the building and see what this stuff picks up. We're gonna come back in about an hour or so and start our in-person investigation from there. So you ready, Dave? I am, let's do it. We left this main building and went to sit in the side bunkhouse for one hour. But we had no idea that what we would capture would sound like someone moving around inside of Edinburgh Manor.
We're back. This is officially the start of the investigation here at Edinburgh Manor. Dave and I are starting on the second floor here where the patients, the residents actually would live, spend a lot of their time. We're gonna see if we can get some activity stirred up up here. See if maybe someone wants to communicate with us while we're up here. Whoa, whoa. Really? Hello? You can touch that light. I heard that. Was that in this room? It was. My camera's getting that round pod, so. Are you sure? Yeah. I set it down on this table to make sure that it would, so that I could have both hands to set that stuff up. I am pretty positive that it is in. Oh yeah, most definitely. I didn't mean to scare you off. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, you like that, don't you? Thank you for touching that. Susie, is that you? Thank you. Can you go down to the other end of the hallway down here? Whoa. Can you go down to that end of the hallway down there by that room? You see that green light? If you touch that one, it'll also make a fun noise. Whoa, what was that? Something just, dude. Something was moving in this room. And isn't it weird that the REM pod stopped going off and then all the movement picked up in this room? Yeah. Can you open or close one of these doors for us? I got the room. Do you like that? There's movement all around us. So if you may, if you didn't hear earlier. Hi. Cindy told us we could come in tonight. Me and him are friends. His name is Ryan. My name is Dave. And we just wanted to come in here and talk to you tonight. We know you're here because you keep making that go off. So thank you. That's too weird, man. Mm -hmm. It was like I set it up and I walked away and after you walked by, it was like something was following us down that hallway and it just started to play with that. But now it seems to have stopped. Where did you go? We, we can hear you down there.
You want to head down that way? Yeah, let's walk down this way and see. Remember, we have a camera right here on the stairs to get the up and down part of the second floor. There's a music box sitting on the stairs there, but down below we set up motion sensors. The receiver is up here, so if something moves down there on the first floor or interrupts that motion sensor, it'll go off. Whoa. Wow. Thank you. You seem very playful. We turned our backs again, man. Yeah. Well, if you want to keep playing with that, we'll give you some space. Oh, sh Whoa, did you hear that? You heard that, right? Yeah. Oh, sh Whoa, did you hear that? Oh, sh Whoa, did you hear that? Sound like feet shuffling along the floor in here. That's that room with the walker in it. It is. What made that sound in here? If you need energy to be able to make things happen, you can take my energy, you can use it. You can do that if it'll help you make communication if it'll help you talk to us you can use you can use my energy isn't that what that sounded like though it was like kind of yeah We're gonna be here all night and you're more than welcome to follow us around and communicate with us. Whoa. Out there. Yeah. The faster the melmeter beeps, the more extreme the ambient temperature change. And once the beeping reaches its fastest point, it stops. And then our microphone captures an unexplained voice. Whoa. Could the heat be the energy that was fueling this paranormal occurrence? Do you want us to come back down this way? What is this? There's a mirror on this door, but what was behind it? It just looks like a closet. Was someone making noise down here? There's a step up there, I guess. It's a little ledge I just fell over. Interesting. Yeah, it seems to have gotten quiet. It does. We got a lot more of this building that we need to cover. Yeah. Even though we haven't established verbal communication, one thing's for sure, something is interested in us. That's for sure. Absolutely. So let's capitalize on that while we can. Oh my God, that looks creepy. Okay. So you want to be in this room? Yes. Okay. So while we run the SLS, Dave is going to be sweeping with the Ghost Tube Vox, which is a program designed by Jared and Amy from Amy's Crypt. 
and it is a spirit box program, but the difference is, is the device's magnetometer actually determines how the spirit box within the program sweeps and where it sweeps to. So they believe the magnetic fields can affect the sweep and therefore determine what words come through. So it's an interesting thing to experiment with, so we'll see what happens. I had to hit record really fast. Okay. I have a camera right here in my hand. If you walk up to it, Whoa. Did that light just come on? Uh... That's really creepy. What the hell? Yeah. Why did that light turn on? Mommy. Mommy. Susie? I don't get that. Go in there. Go in there? Why do you want me to go in there? Why? Did you did you turn that light on down here? Really no way. What did that voice say? I don't know, but that was very weird. Picture. Picture. It's the sun. It's the sun. I... Standing in the cafeteria, almost 20 yards away from this light and seeing it turn on, is just plain eerie. Instantly, it made the hair on the back of our necks stand up. Did it have the same effect on you? Creepy, right? Now let's debunk it. 15 minutes ago, we entered the basement loaded down with gear. Both of us were carrying so much equipment our hands and arms were overflowing. Just before we entered the hallway, Dave tried these two light switches. Each immediately turned on lights in the kitchen. That's not where we wanted to set up. Immediately back off. As he rounds the corner, he tries another switch. Oh no. Nothing. No light. So he doesn't turn it off. No need to, right? And there is the defining moment. For the next 12 minutes, we set up the equipment and start filming. Both of us are blinded by LCD camera screens, so we don't even notice the bulb heating up in the hallway. Finally, after 13 minutes, the bulb is warm enough to illuminate. You said picture. Do you want to take the picture like we were talking about? What's your name? Come on, you can stand in the picture. Can you stand in yes. the I see it's me. Mm -hmm. We're just trying to take somebody's picture. If you want your picture taken, stand out here in the middle of the hall. We're not here to get anybody in trouble. <laughs> Who's in the laundry room? What's your name? This is... 
this game. Oh, this game. It's a what? Whoa. What? Just disappeared. I had something on the floor and it just disappeared. Who's in here with us? Whoa. I heard that. That was so loud. Whoa. Whoa. Are you in the kitchen here? Are there any cooks here? I don't know, we haven't really had much intelligent communication. We've had some equipment interaction and stuff, but as far as voices and responses and stuff, we haven't really had much communication. I think we need to up the stakes a little bit. Maybe make them feel a little bit more comfortable. I don't know, you wanna split up and see what happens? Yeah, if you would like to do a solo, you can. Do you wanna, do you wanna go out to the to the bathroom house and leave the leave this whole building to me. Yes. Or would you like to also do a solo? I'm I think I'm good tonight. Bye. Good, good luck. Let's head over to the bunkhouse. Let Ryan do his solo. It's been very quiet for the most part tonight. We've had a few things, you know, but I think with Ryan being in there by himself, there's more of a chance of something happening. So here's the bunkhouse. And that is where we're headed. If there are any children here with me, can you go down and play with one of the toys that I left in that room for you? It's just like your other toys. They light up. They make noise. And if you stand in this doorway right here to your room, music will play. Now, I feel kind of bad because it's nice and warm in here, and uh, it's not in the manor, so apologies, Ryan. You got the short end of the stick on that one. Okay. Rolling. EVP session. Edinburgh Manor. This is being set right in the hallway here on the railing. Right on that railing, there's an orange light. If you walk up and you speak to it, I'll be able to hear your voice. Definitely creepy in here, being alone. Being completely alone. It's definitely creepy in here, being alone. Very creepy in here. Okay, so I am here in the bunkhouse. Ryan is still over in the manor. He is doing his solo. When he comes to get me, uh, he'll have to knock at the door. 
And as soon as he does that, I will start rolling again, and uh, we'll see what he had happen. Can you speak through this box loudly so I can hear you, please? Hello, who's the man that just spoke? Mark? Is that what you said? Mark, how did you end up here? How was that, Mark? Can you touch this light? Like this? Or that one over there? On the bed? It does the same thing. Someone upstairs really loved this thing over here. Can you go touch that box that's sitting in the hallway? The one with the numbers on it? Hello. You know, I'm not going to be mad if you push, it, push stuff over or move things. You're more than welcome to do that. I'm all alone in here. You don't have to be afraid to come talk to me. I'm the only person in this whole building. Should I go, is, is it safe for me to walk upstairs alone? Is that a safe thing for me to do? How about you tell me, where should I walk? Should I go to the second floor? Or should I go to the basement. All right. I must say that there was a good bit of, there was a lot of quiet time in there. Not much happened, so I thought, why not go upstairs and see what happens by myself. Dave and I were having some pretty interesting REM pod activity earlier. Can you go down to the other end of the hallway down here? Whoa. Okay. I'm gonna sit back right here and see if anything happens. I'm sitting right at the top of the stairs. Where's the person that was making the lights light up earlier? Wow, I just heard the pedal box say something from all the way up here. That's insane. Can you hear me? Can you hit that bell that's in that room in there? I'm hearing 
like someone moving. Who's down there on the first level now? I can hear you. Are you a resident? Here at Edinburgh Manor? Should I go back downstairs? Was that okay with you that I went upstairs alone? Dead? Who's dead? I'm gonna go get Dave, okay? I've been in here alone for an hour now. He's probably wondering if I'm still alive. Okay, so Ryan just got done. He just knocked on the door. And there he is. Welcome. Hello. Wow, it's warm in here. It was 33 degrees in there. Actually, the cameras are still rolling in that room and the equipment's still going. Oh, okay. Including the mini portal. But I left all of that, took the REM pod, and went upstairs to the second floor again and put it exactly where we were having an activity. Mm -hmm. Nothing happened with the REM pod, but from the second floor, mm -hmm. I heard a man come through the mini portal from all the way downstairs in that room, and it echoed through the whole building. Really? Wow, I just heard the pedal box say something from all the way up here. But it was it, it was it was a cool it was a weird experience being in there alone like that, but it was cool. So this is actually, we, we were looking at some of the history over in the bunkhouse before we came over here. This would have been the women's wards over here. <laughs> Did you just look in the mirror and scare yourself? Yes, I did. Sorry. That's, uh, yes. So, gosh, I did it again. <laughs> so yeah, like whoa. What was that? That was loud. So yeah, like whoa. What was that? So yeah, like whoa. What was that? Are you laughing at me scaring myself? You want to go down here? Yeah. Hello? Lounge closet. It's so crazy to see how everything was just left behind. The TVs. The, I mean, the walkers are still here. The chairs. It is. It's, it's, it's like the whole place is just... Time is just standing still in here. And if you think about it, that's the perfect recipe for the energies to replay themselves, residual paranormal activity, or even trap souls. Did you hear it? Mm-hmm. 
Come on down this way. Is anybody ready for their medication? Where did that come from? I don't know. Whoa. I don't even think I've been in this room. There's a pool table. Edinburgh Manor has been on our paranormal bucket list for almost a decade, and investigating inside this former asylum was exciting. Whoa. Whoa. Chilling. Oh, sh And thought-provoking. Mommy. Mommy. Susie? It also reminded us why it's important for us to do an abandonment session on every investigation. It's not glamorous, but it provides some of the best paranormal evidence. The manor has stood here for over 110 years, collecting energy from the souls that were deemed different and we hope that it stands here for many more, so that maybe one day, we can come back and visit again. Hey, you made it to the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, hit that like button and leave us a comment down below. And if you're new here, be sure to hit the subscribe button and set notifications to all so you never miss a video. We want to thank the people whose names are scrolling on screen right now for supporting us through Patreon and the YouTube channel membership. If you'd like to see your name here, along with a heap of other perks, Follow the links in the description. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.